students. Welcome to this other tutorial. Here I'm going to talk to you about some of the files that we'll be looking at in the lecture on numerical optimization. In particular, uh, I'm going to explain to you how the one-dimensional approximation works and how to play around with the two-dimensional approximation. So first off, let's open the 1D approx. Um, the first thing you want to notice is this add path. What that does is it adds this folder here and its contents to the MATLAB path so that all of the functions in here will be available to you. So if you're in the wrong folder when you do this, MATLAB will not actually not give you a warning. So you can run this, this bit here and it doesn't give you a warning, but once you try to run, uh, for example, this grad est function here, it's going to tell you that it, it can't find the function. So if that happened, probably you were not in the right folder. So let's go into the uh, the right folder here. Okay. First off, <clears throat> I create an anonymous function here, which is the one we're going to be looking at. Um, so we're going to be plotting it over these x values here with 100 points. And then we're going to have a starting value. So let's see what happens if we run this first cell. Notice that this yellow part here, that's just called a cell, and it goes from two percentage signs to the next two. So it's a neat way of organizing the code. So if I just hit Command Enter or Control Enter on Windows, it just runs that section. And it plots this function for me and the starting value here. Okay, in the next bit here, we're going to be looking at a linear approximation here and a quadratic approximation, both created as anonymous functions, as you can see indicated by the at signs. So the first thing that happens is that we calculate the gradient and hessian of the function f, the anonymous function f up here, at the point x0. Okay, so let's actually see what that looks like. Okay, it worked, and we can see that something appeared in my workspace. G is now minus 3.75. Does that make sense? Yeah, it kind of makes sense. It's a negative slope here. Good. So the Hessian, what is that in this case? It's just a number because it's a scalar function. It's 28. What does that mean? It means that the gradient is increasing here. That makes sense, right? It's going to be increasing all the way up here. Good. So with these two in memory, we're ready to create this F lin approx, the linear approximation. So let's create that. Let's see what it looks like. It's just an anonymous function and we can evaluate it at x0 for example or we can evaluate it at 0.5. We can evaluate it where we like and therefore we can also plot it so we could for example here um, we could go and replace f with f lin approx and then see what it looks like. And it's just a straight line because it's a linear function. Okay? So if we do the same thing with f quad approx, then we get another anonymous function, f quad approx, that we can evaluate at, say, 0.5. We get a number. And we can also go up here and replace this part here with f quad approx. And we see that it's a beautiful parabola. Okay? So let's run this entire section. What happens is it finds the minimum of the quadratic function. Okay, you can work through the math, and this is the equation for the minimum. Then there's some uh, x values where we'll be plotting some functions, and then we're going to plot the linear approximation and the quadratic approximation together, and then also show the starting point and the minimum of the quadratic approximation. And then we're going to update and set the previous starting value to the minimum of the quadratic. So let's see what happens if we run this section. There we go. We're, we're getting the linear approximation here, and we have our quadratic approximation in here. The parabola, and then the blue point here, that's the minimum of that one. Which is now the new, uh, we set it to the new x value. So if we run this cell again, there we go, we have a new approximation in the previous point and we move to the bottom of that one and we can run this section again and we jump to the bottom of this thing here 
and we can keep on going to our heart's content. And you can see that as we get down here to the bottom, we start taking smaller and smaller steps. And here you can see that x naught is 0.7368 and x quad min, the minimum of the quadratic approximation, actually is very close. Let's actually see what the difference between the two is. x naught minus x quad min. Oh, they're actually the same. So we've stopped changing. In other words, we've converged. Then we have this uh, other function that I want to briefly talk about. There's a lot of stuff in this code. Don't worry about it. Just run the whole thing. So how do you run the whole thing? You go to the terminal and then you type main underscore 2d underscore approx. Then it runs the entire file here. So there's a lot of stuff that uh, goes into making sure that these graphs look nice. Okay, let's start with figure one. This is the Rosenbrock function. It's a famous function that's used a lot in optimization. So if we click this button here, we can turn it around and look at it from different angles. You can see I've given it this, this is the starting point I'm thinking about, and this is actually the global minimum. And as you can see, the, the Rosenbrock function gets very flat down here towards the bottom. Okay, and let's find figure two. Here you can see what I've put in is a linear approximation, but in 3D. This is what it looks like. It's just a flat plane that approximates the Rosenbrock function, which now I've removed the colors from so that we can see through it. And you can see that it approximated right here at the green uh, dot. So what does this approximation look like? It's down here, it's called F linear approx. It's F naught plus grad times X minus X naught. So actually, if we go back to the other function, these are actually the same expressions. Except that now, grad is a two-dimensional vector. Okay, so let's go to the third picture here. It shows you a quadratic approximation, what it looks like in 3D. Looks like this. And, and the red dot here is the minimum of the quadratic. And you can see that if we go down here to the quadratic approximation part here, that if uh, the minimizing here, the fun, uh, the expression here, x uh, hess backslash grad, which is the same as writing hess to the minus first times grad. It's just MATLAB notation for uh, doing that. It's actually the same here, g over h, or in other words, g, uh, h to the minus first times g. This is just in matrix notation. And here you can see that the formula for f quad approx is, it's the same here, but then the second part here, the quadratic term now is x minus x naught prime times hess times x minus x naught, and hess is now a, now a matrix, the hessian matrix. So this is a quadratic form. And finally, in figure four, you can see the quadratic approximation together with the with the Rosenbrock function. And you can see how we, we actually get quite far down towards the bottom here, but we're not getting the direction right. And if you, you can zoom in as well, it's a little bit hard to zoom in in the 3D, but what you can uh, get a sense of is what the, uh, what the, the approximation looks like up close. Here you can see it. You can see it gets pretty uh, pretty close to the true function as we zoom in. That's all I wanted to show you about these uh, functions. Looking forward to talking about them in the lecture.